Hello and welcome back to Python 101. Uh, so this is module 6, and in this module we're going to be talking about Python modules. Um, <clears throat> so if you're coming from another language, there's a lot of different names for this. Uh, Rust, they're called crates. In Go, they're called packages. In C, often people call them libraries. Um, it doesn't really matter what you call them. Basically what it is, is it's the ability for you to import somebody else's code. <clears throat> and uh, Python itself includes a huge selection of uh, utilities called the standard library. Um, this has a whole bunch of different things. It has the OS and Sys modules, it has random module, uh, it has even some drawing modules like Turtle, it has graphical interface modules like GTK, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ones that are included directly inside of Python. <clears throat> the standard library is extensive for sure. Uh, but there's also ways for you to write your own modules and to also be able to easily download other people's modules that have written um, modules online. So uh, yeah, so today we're going to be covering all of that and uh, yes, yeah, so let's just get straight into it. So first off, let's talk about module imports. So we've already seen this a couple of times. Um, so we can, for example, let's say if we import uh, random this is the random module that we're currently importing and as a part of this module we can for example call different functions so we can say for example we'll print uh, random dot rand int for example and then if we go ahead and open up the command line go ahead and do python module 6.py and we also have to give it some arguments oh whoops uh, we get a random number between 1 and 10, just like we would kind of expect. So what's actually happening here is that there'll be a file somewhere buried deep in Python called random.py, and inside that file there will be a function called randint, and that randint function will be what's actually uh, what we're actually running. <clears throat> now, another way that we can actually uh, that we could do this if we wanted to make it a little bit more consistent, if we're for example, using the random module as random int function like 35 times, we may not necessarily want to uh, have to keep typing in random dot random int all the time. So one thing that we can do is we can do what's called um, a from import. So we can say from random, which is the module, and then we can say import and then whatever the function name is. So in this case, random int. And then instead of doing what we have here, we can just do random int, and that's being called directly from the uh, directly from the random module without having to keep constantly re-importing it. Uh, also, quick tip, this is always faster in Python. The lookup speeds for this is always going to be faster, so uh, where you can, it's always a good idea to do this. Uh, another thing that you can do as well is you can actually alias commands, and so what that means is that instead of having to type in rand into every time, we could, for example, say, um, Let's say something like maybe we have a different terminology for random for generating a random number. Let's just say uh, it's ri. Uh, not a good example. I wouldn't recommend doing this all the time. But what we can do with this now is we can say ri instead, and then that will call the random int module. Um, for some things, this makes sense. For really long commands, this might make sense. Um, and there's some common conventions with different libraries that use this. Uh, but for the most part, I would avoid just using two-letter uh, two-letter aliases like this because it makes it really hard to understand what's actually happening in the code. Okay, so that's basically all the different ways of doing imports. Um, <clears throat> definitely, like I said, this is usually the best option uh, from random import random something along these lines. The one thing you have to watch out for is if you have any name collisions. So if you're importing a function that has the same name as a function you're defining, the defined function inside the uh, Python file will always override the one that you're importing. So just uh, just keep that in mind when you're uh, naming your functions and when you're importing them as well. Okay, <clears throat> okay let's get on to the fun stuff. So. Let's take a look at writing our own modules. So right here I have a uh, file open called module6.py, so I've gone ahead and just created a folder called module6 with uh, module underscore 6 inside of it. Um, <clears throat> so to create your own modules, basically Python, if things are in the same directory, so here we have module6 for example, 
uh, if something is in its own directory, you can actually just import files directly. So if I go ahead in here, for example, and uh, I create something like, uh, I don't know, let's just say core.py or something like this. Um, and then I create a function that says, uh, I don't know, um, do math. These are terrible function names. Please don't follow in my footsteps. I just couldn't think of anything off the top of my head. Uh, and let's say it takes two numbers, for example, and it just says, uh, I don't know, result is equal to num1 times num2, and then return result minus equals 20 or something like that, right? And then this just basically multiplies the two numbers and subtracts 20. Just like that, minus equals 20. Oh, sorry, we can actually just do this and then just return the result. just like that. And so now I have a function inside core.py that's called do math. And so if we want to use that do math function inside module six, what we can go ahead and do is we can say from core import do math. And then now we can do do math of like 10 and 15, just for example, or something like that, right? And we can go ahead and print that. And let me just quickly open up a terminal. And then now we can do Python module 6.py and we get 130, which is 10 times 15, which is 150 minus 20 equals 130. So works perfectly uh, as expected. And so that's how you can do something super simple. Um, there are other ways to write modules. Specifically, there's a platform uh, built into Python called, well, it's not directly built into Python, but uh, there's a platform called PyPI. And so, let me just show you this. So PyPI uh, is the standard uh, place that packages come from in Python, or modules as they're sometimes called. Um, and so from here, this is where you can download things uh, to use in your projects. And so I'm not gonna be covering how to create a project that you can put on PyPI in this, um, this course. Uh, in Pyth 202, I'll be covering how to do this. Uh, but the, with this, what you can actually do is, let's just say, for example, you wanted to use something like uh, TQDM, which is a very popular module. So TQDM, uh, sometimes called Taquodom, it's basically a, a nice little module that allows you to do things where if you're doing any uh, iteration like this, uh, so any sort of for loops or whatever, you can have a progress bar that comes across. So it's very popular for a whole bunch of different things. Um, and so Python, if you installed it using the same uh, methods that I showed you for any of the, uh, any of the systems, there's either the option of pip, which you'll see there'll be a whole bunch of things that pop up, or pip3. One of the two will work, or both will work, it doesn't really matter. Uh, on Linux or Mac, you're gonna have to either use uh, sudo pip install tqdm, or alternatively, uh, you can use pip install dash dash user tqdm. And so basically, uh, for w the way this works is you just type pip install and then whatever the, um, module name is and then because on mac and linux there are specific um things to do with permissions and how mac and linux handle permissions uh you have to add either sudo or dash dash user um, on windows you can just do pip install and then whatever the module name is and so basically as long as it's on uh, pypi you can just type in the module name you can see here it just says pip install tqdm and basically what that will do is if I go ahead and hit enter, I already have it installed, so it's gonna just say requirement already satisfied, but for you, there'll be a loading bar and you'll go ahead and download and fetch it. And then what you can do is we can add another function here that just says iterate, for example. And then we can just say amount equal to 40. And with that, 
what we can do is we can just say um, one number in range zero to amount. And the way that TQDM works is you just say from TQDM import TQDM. And now we can just say TQDM, oops, wrap that. And then we we'll say pass. And then now in here we can do import do math and iterate. And now we can just do iterate. Uh, one, actually, I'm going to import the time module as well. Um, so from time, import sleep. And I'm just going to do sleep for uh, half a second on each iteration. So now when I go ahead and run, oh, let me just this really quickly. When I go ahead and run Python module six, we get a loading bar that pops up and you can see, so now it's properly working. Um, so finding modules, uh, PyPI is a good place to look for them. Uh, if they show up on PyPI, um, then it means they are, you can just install them super easily. Um, they typically, people have like a quick start guide where they have documentation and so you can go ahead and read through this and learn how to use it, right? So it tells you how to install and then there's just a basic usage and that sort of information. Um, and there's a whole bunch of popular projects you can go ahead and find. Them. Typically, if you type in something like, uh, I don't know, um, Say you want to try and get a web page, how to get a web page in Python, for example. Typically, somebody will request some sort of module. In this case, they'll probably either do URL lib, which I'm not a huge fan of, but uh, another one is requests. So you can say requests Python. And you can see, uh, oh, it shows up on PyPI, which means that it exists. And so you can go ahead and install it. You can learn how to use it and do all that sort of stuff. Um, there's a huge number of packages on PyPI. Uh, well, there's 211,000 projects, so that'll give you a <laughs> good in indication of how many uh, how many people use this. Um, it's the de facto standard inside of Python um, for basically sending off your uh, your packages. And um, the only other thing that I did want to mention is that you can actually, let's say for example, you have a project that has a whole bunch of things that need to be installed. Uh, the standard in Python, so let's say for example, you had TQDM and uh, that other module that I was talking about, the requests module. Let's say that you required, uh, oops, request, did I spell requests? Oh, it's just requests, that's why. Uh, requests, PyPI, yeah, let me just grab this. So uh, basically, what you can do is you can write a file called requirements.txt. So just in the main folder of your project, you can just write requirements.txt. And what this will allow you to do is you just write out exactly what you want to do. So requests and let's say tqdm, for example. And you'll see this often in a lot of Python projects where they just have this requirements.txt. And the way that you use this is uh, people can just type in pip install dash R, which stands for read, or pip install dash dash user dash R, or sudo pip install uh, dash R, and then you just type in requirements.txt. And then with that, it'll go ahead and read, and it'll run them all. I already have both of them here, so they're already ready to go. And that's how you specify things to download from the internet. Um, yeah, and if you're looking to write your own PyPI modules, then keep an eye out for uh, the Python 202 course when that's out, and that will include information on how to write your own modules and how to get your own modules up here on PyPI so that people can just do pip install and then whatever your module name is. All right, uh, I guess now we can go ahead and we can start looking at the, uh, the exercises and the challenges. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're doing. So import the math module and use math.squareroot on a user inputted value. Note you have to input the value to int automatically using int input. So in this case, we're gonna wanna do, uh, we can just use from math import square roots, just like that, go ahead and close those two. Uh, and then we can just do, 
new input is equal to int input. Please enter a number to square root. And then we can just say uh, print square root. User input just like that. And let's go ahead and run that. So Python, Python 101 modules exercises. Uh, so let's just say four. Oh, oops, sorry. Four. And we get two. So there we go. Seems to be working. Uh, we can start again. We can just do 64. Oh, 64. And we get eight. So yeah. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy. Uh, import the sleep function from the time module as pause and then run pause 5. So we'll just print something beforehand so that we can see what's happening. Hello. Uh, and then print hello again. And with this, we can just do from time import sleep as pause. And we can just say pause uh, for 5. And so basically, this will print once so that we can see it. Uh, and then it will wait five seconds, three, four, five, and then it'll go ahead and print the second one, just like that. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. And the so this sleep function is super useful. Just make sure that you're careful when you're using it because these are seconds and not uh, milliseconds like some people think. Some, some languages do different timings. This is seconds. So if you want milliseconds, you need to do uh, decimal places. Uh, with a floating point number, so it's 0 0.5 if you want to do half a second, and then for whole numbers if you want to do seconds. So just keep that in mind with the time module. Um, so import the sleep mod sleep function from the time module as pause. Write a function called pause that takes an argument and prints it, which pause will be called and why. So we can say from time import sleep as pause, and then it wants us to def pause, uh, and then we'll just say like four, and then we'll just say print, or sorry, num, and then just print num. And the question is, if I go ahead and I run pause of four, what's gonna happen? So uh, the answer is it's going to run as def pause because it's been defined again. So if I go ahead and run this, we get four and we don't get uh, the expected behavior that we thought because now we've defined something, but if we just deleted that, then we get the same standard pausing for four seconds that we actually wanted to get initially. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at the uh, challenges. So TQDM, oh, well, we already looked at TQDM, so we already have it installed. Uh, the third-party module to create progress bars for loops. Figure out how to install the Python module TQDM with pip and look at the documentation to help figure out how to create a for loop with a progress bar that goes through 10 iterations at one iteration a second. Uh, I set up a skeleton code below that will get you 90% of the way there. All you need to do is figure out the TQDM part. You only need to adjust uh, line 30 doesn't exist, so we're just going to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, but basically what we need to do here is we just need to uh, do from TQDM import tqdm and wrap this in the tqdm wrapper and that's about it so if i go ahead and run this now do challenges oops uh oh for oh wait why is this Oh, this is inside of a function, that's why. Uh, so let's just do that so that it's not inside of a function. And there we go. So one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So that works out perfectly. Uh, I don't know why challenge one was inside of a function, but there you go. <laughs> Uh, create a Python module, another file in the same folder called mymodule.py. Inside of mymodule.py, to find a function called print backwards that'll print a string in reverse. You'll know that it's right because when you run the function, it prints le. Uh, you can reverse the string using reverse. Okay, cool. So we want to do this. I don't know why 
these are defined as functions. I don't know why I did that, because uh, we can just do this. So what we need is we need my module.py, and we need something called print back. So def print backwards, and we need uh, a value, and then with that value we want to do reversed of that value. So I think we just want to return it. Unless it specifically said print. No, because I'm printing it here, so I want to return it. Uh, I don't know why I did that. That's weird. Uh, my module. Yeah, so I can go ahead and save that. Yeah, that should work. So if I go ahead and run this now, we get a reversed object out because it's trying to print it. So let's just quickly do this. And do that. Uh, Oh, you know what? The result is equal to reverse to that value. And we can return just like that. And we're going to want to print it. Whoops, that's my bad. Print that, just like that. And oh, does this create a reverse object? Maybe I'm just wrong. Uh, another way that we can do this actually is we can just make the result equal to value, and because it's uh, it's going to be a string, we can actually just do negative one. Uh, or sorry, we can do colon colon negative one, and then it'll return it in, re in reverse also. So that'll be fine. Yeah. So then we can get fully instead. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. I don't know why reversed does that. That's obscure. I've never seen it do that before. Um, okay. Anyways. That's how you complete that challenge. Uh, so go to this repository, which is one of mine, and it says download the repository and run the application. So in this case, we're gonna wanna just click clone or download, you can download the zip. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to open this up to zip file, so it'll give you a folder like this. And on here, it says you can install dependencies using pip install dash r requirements, and then you can run the server by running python routes.py. Uh, okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just open this up. We'll go pip install dash r requirements. And okay, it looks like everything's been downloaded. And then now we can do Python manage dot or Python uh, routes dot pi, and that's what it said in the documentation. And so now it says a bunch of stuff, and it says running on zero zero five thousand. So we can go ahead and grab this. And now that we're in the browser, we can see oh site can't be reached. So I bet you we probably need to do localhost. And there we go. And this is my website. So this is my website running in Python, or at least, well, probably by the time you're seeing this, my old website running in Python. Um, so there you go. So if you manage to get that to work, then you manage to download somebody else's project and get it to run uh, by itself. So uh, that's pretty much everything. So thanks for uh, joining me for this course. Uh, if you are interested, there is a course Pyth 202, and that course will cover some more advanced topics in Python that will be coming out later this year. Uh, and if it's already here, then you'll see a card in the top right appearing on this video, and that will give you an indication that the, uh, the course is already out, as well as it'll be up on Canadian Coding website, which is where I recommend uh, doing the course from. So uh, thank you for joining me. There will be another module that will be the extras module that'll have everything that you may have already watched previously. Um, and then on top of that, there will be an eighth module coming and that eighth module will be next steps that will include things like where you can go to find, uh, to do some projects to get better at Python, some more open-ended projects and that sort of stuff and just some fun side projects that you can learn to do and put on a portfolio if you're interested in getting a job in Python. So. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I will hopefully see you in the next module, whichever that may be.